Morning guys, welcome back to the plot. It's 12th of October now, still plenty of jobs to be doing down here on the plot. First one I want to do, these cabbages have gone from looking beautiful to looking like they're about ready. So I'm going to get stuck in now, see what we can get out of these. Looking, um, you know, decent. I don't know if you can see that one. This one's flopped over. If you see that one as well. Beautiful colouring on them, absolutely beautiful. Oh. Outer leaves, as always, a bit knobbly, but we'll get rid of them, see what's lurks beneath. Look at you. Uh, we're getting to the heart of it now. Look at the colour of that little beauty there. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, we do love uh, do love a bit of red cabbage. These guys seem to get left alone a lot more by um, the sort of the white fly and the cabbage white caterpillars and uh, what else leaves them alone? Pigeons as well. I've noticed that outdoors that the uh, red brassicas do a lot better. So that's lovely. There, we're going to uh, we're going to have that one. I'm going to take the other two as well that I've got. I mean, look. Does nature get any better than that? Looks pretty, edible. What more can you ask for? Wow. Okay. All right, next thing. Oh. I'm gonna bust the zip on my jacket. All right, I should be. I'm sure it'll be fixable. And there's a beautiful stack of Brussels sprouts ready to rock and roll. So we're not gonna hang about, we're gonna get them as well. To start by knocking off some of these lower leaves. A cloud of white fly emerges. Look at them knobbies, do you see them? Lovely. I'm still a cloud of white fly coming off. There we go. I don't know if you can see on that leaf there. That's all the little white fly eggs and the white flies themselves. Not too great. But it doesn't affect the leaf too much, it's just the uh, stuff that they secrete, this black stuff here. I suppose you could call it poo. So there we go, look at that lovely stack of sprouts there, do you see them? Don't forget your sprout tops. Sprout tops entirely edible and delicious, just cabbagey with a bit of a sprouty flavour to them. But yeah, let's get these knobbies out now. Oh, that's a tough old devil, come on. Getting through that. And there we go, look at these, beautiful. Ready to be uh, munched on, absolutely delush. Oh. And here we go, look at that, look at the size of some of these knobbies on there, beautiful. Lovely, lovely. Now, how many of you have been growing a beautiful crop of leeks just to turn up one day and find them all looking like this? Well, unfortunately, Allium leaf miner or the leek moth is the culprit. It's relatively new to this country, but it is uh, pretty much everywhere now and it is decimating crops. So, um, they can recover. Do you see this one on the left here? That one was one of the first ones affected. And uh, I pulled all of the dead leaves off and as you can see, it is starting to come back. But um, some of these other ones, they just turn into rotten, slushy malumps. Malumps? You know what I'm saying. Slushy leeks. And here is one of the offending articles. As you can see, the bit underground doesn't look too bad and could probably be used in some sort of uh, leak emergency. Uh, they've not grown massive and as you can see they've all gone squishy and horrible in here. I'm going to see if I can find one of the little blighters. Haha, -ha, we have a winner. Do you see? I don't know if it'll let me focus. Let me fill with most of my screen. You see a little grub? That is the Allium leaf minor maggot, the leek moth maggot if you like. 
I don't know if that's focusing at all. There we go. See the little fella there? You can actually see his trail of destruction as he's chewed his way along the leaf. And then there he is now, wondering what's going on. Horrible little sucker. You know what we do with him? Oops. Oh, sorry mate, I was going to rehome you. Um, so yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my leek crop. I think the best way to uh, avoid it is obviously to try and cover them to prevent the actual moth from getting to them to lay its eggs. Um, I didn't cover these this year and that's the result so you know I think there's still large parts of the country that aren't affected but believe me it's spreading, it's only been in the country a few years and uh, it's decimating crops. Well, the harvest continues this year, we're well into October now and uh, I'm going to take some of this lovely kohlrabi here. As you can see, it's a nice little plant, it's been growing away here, fairly neglected. As you can see, nice round bulb on there, that's the bit that we want to eat. The leaves are edible as well, but we mainly grow that for the fat stem there which you can grate up, it's very cabbagey, um, so you chop it up and use it in a stew or you can like grate it into a coleslaw or something like that, absolutely lovely. So we'll get rid of these leaves, there you can start to see it there a bit better. So one, two, three, four, I've got five of them, I'll take them now because they're not the world's biggest but uh, they're certainly going to be tasty. And there we go, look at them little beauties. Lovely job. Also got one of these lovely cabbages here as well that we can take. Need a closer look on that one. Look at that, beautiful. Proper impressed with that. There we go, it's a bit better dressed up now, you can see that, lovely job. Hey hey! Oh dear. Oh, get that door shut, it's absolutely horrible out there, the rain's really started piling in now. So I'm going to come in, dry off for two minutes and um, I've got jobs to do in my greenhouse so that might be the next one. I think the weather's made my mind up for me on that, I've got to go and get some uh, chillies and all the rest in. Uh, I have to just wipe all of the dirt off my trowel and my uh, secateurs because it's getting that wet out there. It's getting really, really muddy. It's got a good beat. Cauliflower was fluffy and cabbage is green. Strawberry sweeter than any I've seen. Beetroot, purple, and onions white All grow steadily day and night The apples are ripe, the plums are red Broad beans are sleeping in a blanket bed Blackberries are juicy but rhubarb sour Marrow's fattening hour by hour Gooseberries hairy and lettuces fat Radishes round and runner beans flat The apples are ripe and the plums are red Broad beans are sleeping in a blanket bed Bum, ba bum Turnips cream, red and ink tomatoes that used to be green, brown potatoes in little heaps. Down in the darkness where the celery sleeps, the apples are ripe and the plums are red. Broad beans are sleeping in a banquet bed. That's it, let's go in the greenhouse, sort out them tomato plants because they're done, let's sort out them chilies. Come on. So we're inside the greenhouse, greenhouse, greenhouse. So everything's gone a bit echoey. 
Um, one of the things I want to sort out is these tomatoes. I've got quite a few green ones here which I can take home and ripen up nice and warm somewhere dark. Um, and I've got a few red ones on there as well which I can take and they'll be absolutely lovely. One of the other jobs that I want to tackle is these chilies as well because they are not going to be long with us now I'll be honest with you now that we're losing daylight and temperature but if you have a look I've got chilies and sweet peppers all over those so we shall have a look at a decent harvest. Oh. Now you may have heard about trying to uh, overwinter a chilli plant or a pepper plant. Now technically they are perennial so you know they will last more than one year, they will regrow. Now the challenge over here in the UK is um, obviously the weather. If you leave them outside even in an unheated greenhouse they're not going to make it. You can try wrapping them up um, and you might get lucky if it's not a ridiculous winter. Other than that you can take one home but again even on a sunny windowsill you still might lose them. Um, it's just daylight hours and everything like that, they're not well suited to this climate. But you know, if you've got room and you want to bring one in and love and care for it over winter, then by all means do so, because you could get a nice early harvest next year out of them. Um, right, I'm just going to get stuck into these guys and get something harvested, which is going to be absolutely lovely on this horrible rainy day. Now these plants look actually now these plants actually look okay and quite green at the minute. There's some of the lovely chilies that are coming off them, they're KN. But um, at the minute, I think this week, uh, we have just started what really 12th of October and we're looking at I think it's just over 10 hours, 10 and a quarter hours of daylight. By this time next week we'll be down to about nine and three quarter hours. So you know it's just getting steadily colder, steadily darker. And um, I just want to make sure that these chilies uh, are used and harvested while we still can. Now there's a few green ones on there, if you want to leave those on that's fine. They can also be used as green chilies. But um, yeah, these plants are going to really start to show signs of the weather soon. Also on the, uh, the sweet chilies as well, I'm going to start to take a load of them. Um, even if they're in sort of this green, slightly red state. Again, just because, you know, it'd be an absolute shame to waste them now or to lose them to the cold weather or bugs. So, you know, that one will be absolutely lovely, lucky, start to go a bit red. So I'm going to do two little piles, sweet, pota um, sweet potatoes, sweet peppers and uh, spicy chillies. And hopefully we'll get enough to, uh, you know, make up some lovely dishes with. There's a couple showing damage. Um, you can get earwigs and wood lice and all sorts that will want to go into them. So do you see right at the bottom of that one, we've got a tiny little hole. I reckon if we have a little investigate inside we'll find something living in there. You see that? Let's get the old knife out and have a look. Hopefully it doesn't jump out on me and try and attack me. Ah yes, do you see? See the cobby webs in there? Yes. Hopefully you can anyway. Let's see if we can get a focus. Yes. So yeah, there's something living inside of that one. Obviously you can cut the end off and still use it, but um, just be aware because it doesn't look like much on the outside but you know if you give that to your family or friends or something and they chop it open they're going to be like Ugh, there's a bug inside on the sweet pepper side of things i do seem to have more fun with the more fun hey come on let's dance <laughs> no um i do seem to have more joy rather with the uh, these long peppers uh, the traditional bell-shaped peppers for some reason just don't do too well with me um i seem to get a lot of pests on them so you know this is one to try I'll try and get the name of it somehow. Is it a Romano? Might be a Romano. Romano. I'll tell you what I have started doing recently is um, I've got Audible on my phone. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. I'm not trying to push it. But uh, whilst I'm working away, I like to have a, an audio book or something like that playing. Um, it'd be interesting to know what you guys do when you're on the plot. Do you just listen to the silence and the sound of nature? Or do you know like to play the radio, listen to music? Or, you know, have a book going on the background? Uh, yeah, it'd just be quite interesting actually, it helps me time pass anyway. That's a lot of the chilies sorted out now and the sweet peppers, so if you have a look down here, uh, the ones that I've managed to harvest out of there, as you can see, is a nice uh, selection that we've got going there. So I've got the sweet peppers over on the left and everything else of uh, chilies. Got some KN orange habanero, red habaneros, some yellow Hungarian hot wax, some jalapenos, and. Um, and I've forgotten the others, I'll be honest with you, and I couldn't find the labels. So hopefully, uh, you know, that'll keep me going. 
Obviously your chillies, uh, you can just freeze them whole as they are, take them out of the freezer and use them as you want to. I've still got plenty more on there actually, I didn't do any of my uh, patio sizzle, which is that uh, little pointy one in the centre of shot there. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get round to them at some other point. I'm going to give these a water, they seem a bit dry. I know there's not much fruit left on them, but uh, there's a bit of green stuff left on. And uh, if we can redden that up, that'll be a bonus. Lovely. Well, after months of nurturing and uh, further months of eating myself silly on tomatoes, these guys are going. The ones that are left on, um, they've gone a little bit over, a bit funny. I've got a million and one tomatoes at home, so I'm not even fussed. I'm just going to get these sorted out now, get them out of the way before they uh, get diseased or uh, just start dropping and dying and making a mess. Oh, let's get me knife. Thank you, tomatoes. You've done me proud all year. You really have. Right, so that's the Tommy Toms gone for another year. Look at that, empty pots now. I say empty pots, they've all got oxalis growing in them because the blooming greenhouse is covered in the stuff. Anyway, I got some uh, red and green tomatoes off there, the ones that I could salvage. There's no need to chuck away your compost whatsoever. It's probably no good for regrowing in immediately, but if you throw that back onto your beds as a mulch, or if you want to stick it into your compost, that's absolutely fine. Do not uh, have to chuck it away at all. As you can see, uh, my chance of getting any decent syphilis this year is uh, not looking great, actually. Um, I don't mean syphilis, I mean fissilis. I'm being silly. Ah, that's these little things here, the little lanterns, sometimes called a Cape Gooseberry. If you peel open the little lantern. Oh, there's the little gooseberry inside, and they are delicious. Mm. Right, citrusy, lovely. Very fresh. But it's quite uh, quite late on. Last year, millions of them, honestly, they were dropping on the floor quicker than I could pick them. But this year, not so many. Oh, there's another one. Pick them when they're yellow. I'm inside. Once again, beautiful. So, quite a lot done off camera. So, I finished clearing this bed, that bed. Bed at the back with the rhubarb has been tidied, a few other bits and bobs have been done, and then of course all of my other antics that you have seen, so um, hopefully enjoyed your little visit to my allotment today, if you did please give it a thumbs up because uh, it certainly helps the channel, um, and me, so um, thank you very much again for joining me once again, thank you very much for joining me again, thank you very much once again, goodbye. Emergency.